Are your kitchen and bathroom way overdue for a remodel? Well, I got the guy for you. Call John Sellers at First Response Contracting, 484-256-7136. Both residential and commercial services, and he's licensed and insured. Call him at 484-256-7136, First Response Contracting. Hello, this is Brad Wiseman. You're listening to Real Estate and You. We are back in the studio and we have a really interesting topic that we're going to talk about today. You might be hearing this stuff all over the news, all over podcasts, all over everywhere, actually. And it's AI. The word is AI, or the two letters are AI, not the word. It sounds like funny. The word is, it's from Saturday Night Live, I think. But we have Craig Stonehall here from Laughing Rock Technologies. He happens to do our tech stuff here at the office. He's been a good friend for, who, 25 years or so. And when I came up to questions I had on AI, I thought I am going to bring Craig Stonehall in because I'm sure he has been studying this or looking at looking at what this is all about. So how are you doing, Craig? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Brad? I'm doing fantastic. All right. Thanks for coming in. No, I'm glad to be here again. I yes. think this is my second time. S- at least second. Yeah, I think it's second time. It's one of my favorite shows. It's too. been a while. It has been, but it's I'm been a while. Big fan of the show. Thank you so I'm much. Are you here. still doing your podcast too? I, I am. We're, yeah. we're not as popular as you. Well, that's no, that I wouldn't say there. your show's different. You get to drink on your show. Oh, we drink too much. Yeah. You drink a lot. It's probably There's a lot it's of different. Yeah. Is that, <laughs> <laughs> I think sometimes you actually forget the mics on. I can just tell. I, I, and they're swearing aloud on your show. Uh, we, a little bit. We're PG 13. You're PG 13. That's okay. right. So, so we can say like some words. Not all. The, uh, you not can, all the bad words. You can say all the words. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. I didn't think so. I was on there once. You were on our show once. And I liked it. It was very cool. Very cool laid back format. So let's dive into AI, the artificial intelligence. This whole thing has just been blowing up. We are, I'm seeing it everywhere. It's on all kinds of podcasts. I heard a podcast uh, with, on Ed Milet's show. And that is what really prompted me to give you a call is th- it's sounding scary. <laughs> some of this stuff, it's sounding scary and I don't want to be doom and gloom, but just give me like a brief, like what is AI for people that have no idea? Well, it, there are so many misconceptions about what, AI, I mean, I think sci-fi has lied to us okay. over the last 30, 40 years or whatever. It's not Lieutenant Commander Data from Star Trek, the next right. generation. It's not Hal from 2001. Right. Um, and, and maybe at some point it will be something like that. But what we're seeing right now is the emergence of algorithmic machine learning. Now, that is a sub component of AI. Algorithmic machine learning. That is the vast majority of what we're seeing out there. Okay. So what we mean by that is uh, a good example. So your kid is intelligence. Not yeah. artificial, real, but you're intelligent. Right, right. You send them to school. The curriculum they're learning from is the machine learning. Okay. So the way we teach these software programs to mimic humans, which is what AI's definition really is, yeah. is through this machine learning, through these algorithms, through this input of data in a cohesive and, and relevant way. Yeah. So it makes for a very confusing topic, though, because they're not the same thing. They're um, not the same thing. What we're seeing right now is the emergence of tons of siloed... Um, yeah, well, we'll call them AIs for the rest of the show, but yeah. siloed intelligences. Okay. So, and think about your phone, apps uh-huh. on your phone. Yes. You know, every app does a specific thing. We're seeing them pop up in all different industries. We're seeing them pop up in education. We're seeing them pop up in finance. Yeah. Um, and, but they're very targeted. Yes. Um, you know, they do what they do. They learn within their environment. They're fed specific data and they pr- produce very reliable, specific results within its region, within its region. Yes. Got it. So I think what a lot of people think of when they hear AI is they think of that overreaching Skynet. Okay. What, like Siri, Alexa, isn't that, is there AI involved there? I mean, there's machine learning involved there. Gotcha. So as you interact with your Siri or your Alexa, or as all the different people that are on that platform interact with it. It will learn habits. It will learn trends. It will figure out how to interact better. Yeah. Um, But at no point is it really replacing a human. Gotcha. It's doing some mimicking of human behavior. It's trying to get better. It's trying to learn, but it it is not developing into its own intelligence. So it's not really AI. Okay. Um, Okay. So, so is, okay. So what, so where is it changing now? So now I think AI, is it starting to get where, there's actually these machines or whatever robots, whatever you call this, this machine. Is it starting to learn more? I think you're talking about the press, why we're hearing so much about yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. So what happened was machine learning and AI haven't changed that dramatically. They have. Mm-hmm. And Elon Musk has been a huge push on this. If nobody 
doesn't really know where all of this came from. Chat GPT, which yeah. is a huge social, um, you know, machine learning AI. Yes. Um, Elon was a part of open AI, which developed that originally, which is now owned by Microsoft. So he's been a, a, a driving factor in this whole thing, but what has really made it explode on the scene is the advancement in hardware. Mm. Um, NVIDIA making, you know, better processors for doing, um, AI graphics, Intel and AMD making faster and faster chips that gotcha. can process more reality. So it, what you have to understand is when it comes to AI, true AI, as this thing develops, it yeah. does not exist in the same universe we exist in. Right. So every human is basically, we have the same talents, right? You know, we, we get up at the, right. in the morning, we work during the day, we measure ourselves by how much we get done. We have to go to bed. Gotcha. So we all have a common frame of existence, right? AI will not experience time. It could mm. live an entire lifetime in an hour or in a minute or in a second, depending on how much processing power you give to it. Wow. So AI's existence is completely dictated by the amount of processing power that it's allocated to that particular intelligence. So what's happened is over the last four or five years, hardware capability has exceptionally increased. Oh. And all of a sudden we can give these things what they really crave, which is power. Um, they can digest so much more information. We can set an AI loose on the internet and it can read it. I mean, imagine wow. they can read the internet, which is insane. Well, I know they can read pictures. Oh, yeah. They can read pictures because in real estate, we have that going on right now. We, uh, through command, through Keller Williams, we have a, a program now that when it looks at the pictures, it describes the house based on the pictures. And they're getting good at that. Getting they're really good at, good at it. At yes. That. Well, and we've even started doing, I mean, for about the last year, we've been doing a lot of our testimonial writing and our marketing. Yeah. We've been having ChatGPT do it. I just did my bio. On, on chat GPT, I couldn't believe it. I put in a couple things, a couple simple things about myself, about how long I'm in real estate, what I'm doing, the podcast, uh, the American Dream TV show that I'm doing, all this different stuff. There's different points in my life. The paragraph was about this big that I actually gave it, that big on a piece of paper. It wrote a, a bio for me that was one and a half pages, and it Ooh. sounded amazing. Isn't I sounded wild? so freaking cool. <laughs> it was amazing. Like, seriously, I want to date myself after I listened to uh, read it. Of course. It was amazing. It was so amazing. So that's the part. When I read, read that, too, that was I'm sitting there going, wow, this thing is writing something that is better than I can write. And I, this is the first I've seen it do this. I mean, this whole, in the, in the last yeah. two years, it has really leapt forward. Yeah. Um, and the biggest question I get, and I give speeches on this. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been on in, in the technology yeah, yeah. for decades. And this has been a conversation that comes up regularly. And uh, when it, let's talk about ChatGPT for a yeah. minute. I get a lot of people that say, how should we be fighting this in academia? That's the thing I, um, I thought of. Uh, I don't believe we should be. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, I think... <laughs> And this is a bold statement, but I'm going to say it. Why not? I'm on your show. Yeah, whatever. I, I, I think this AI revolution that we're, we're at the forefront of right now, which will happen over the next 20 years, might end up being the single greatest change in humanity, maybe ever. Well, then you're on the positive side of this. Uh, well, I'm not saying it's positive or negative. Okay. I, I'm not giving it a but you sound, But you sound more... Uh, you sound better than the guy I heard on Ed Milet. Well, <laughs> he was he was like, uh, yeah, we should be like ready to dig holes in the ground. And these things, it reminded me of Terminator 2 is the way he made it sound. Like, you know, Terminator 2, where the machines took over, started shooting us and all those things, robots. And well, I mean, that could also be what I thought in my head. No, I mean, I probably, you know. A lot of people in the industry go that direction. I got to be honest. If you give me a couple of beers, I'm probably going to head down that road too. <laughs> <laughs> but, Unfortunately, we don't have any beer down here. Nope, so, nope, that's uh, so we're going to yeah. keep it positive. Yeah, it's good that way. But in reality, we can't control that yeah um and and again sci-fi lied there are no three rules of robotics all right yeah. we, we're watching ais being developed now that we've seen ais that have become complete psychopaths we've seen mm. AIs, ais that have become complete sociopaths serial killers um based the on, one that the one that hit on me was from that show that the, the, the other the podcast i keep referencing was when he said what scared them was when they were doing this test on ai uh, and it was a machine they were talking to, and they're asking all these questions. It's going back and forth, going back and forth. And they've never, ever uh, taught it how to lie. Okay. And at one point, the person interviewing this robot or this machine, he said, are you a robot or you're a machine? And it stopped and went, no. So at that moment, I just got chills. At yeah. that moment, it learned it, 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 it learned something that we didn't teach it. 
it learned how to lie. You want to hear something even more terrifying? And don't quote me on this. I believe it was MIT. Yeah. They did an experiment where they created a couple of rudimentary AIs. Yeah. And not a couple, a multiple. Yeah. And then they released them into an enclosed environment. And they, they fed them basic information, language, math, mm-hmm. enough so that they were functional. And then set them loose in a controlled environment where they only interacted with each other. Within minutes, they started to evolve. Within 24 hours, we had absolutely no way of communicating with them. We had to pull the plug. Because they were communicating. They had invented their own language. They had invented their own math. They had invented their own entire way of interpreting input-output. They had become so foreign from what we perceive as our reality Mm -hmm. that the only way we could deal with them was to turn off the machine. We could not communicate with them anymore. And imagine, if, if you can operate as fast as humanly possible mentally... The human language is terrible. Yeah. It's a horrible way to communicate. It is. <laughs> You're exactly right. And that's it's, where they It's rest. slow. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Are you tired of looking at your car covered in road salt and winter grime or not quite getting the results you would like to see from the car wash? Well, I've got just the solution for you. The Detail Shop, your go-to destination for premium auto detailing. So they, it's very slow. They replaced it. And so whatever happened to, you know, computers in the in the past, I, 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 programmers always said it was, it was uh, when this happens, do this. When this happens, do this. When this happens, do this. If Isn't, then, if then. If then, this. yeah, the if then. That was the, that is not still happening. It is. I mean, look. Just on a much higher level. Everything is, everything is, everything finds parity. Um, yeah. And we always see this in technology. Yeah. Uh, you know, I remember when, when laptops came out, the PC was dead. People still have PCs. Yeah, and when right. tablets came out, the laptop was dead. Yeah. You know, te- People, laptops yeah. are still around. You yeah. have one right there. Um, He's trying to say I'm old fashioned. Do you hear that? Oh, you Let's are. make a note of that. <laughs> we, we all agree. <laughs> yeah, but this is actually a Commodore 64. I don't know if you've ever seen it before. <laughs> <laughs> see, I don't buy that because I don't see you coding. <laughs> yeah, no, there's no way I'm coding. This is true. This is true. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, but... Uh, AI is not going to replace all coding. So we're seeing it right now in the coding world. My coders do it where they will ask an AI to write snippets of code for them. Get out of here. Um, Because the internet still runs on PHP and HTML and all those languages. So AI is not in the process of replacing all technology. What AI is in the process of doing is changing how we interact with our data. Mm. That's a very different thing. We still have the old coding languages and we still have to code in those, but the Mm. AIs can write that code for us. So they're sitting above those traditional if thens. What they're doing is they are gathering, interpreting and handing out results on massive amounts of input. And the real problem we're going to run into Mm. is as these, as these AIs, as they become more commonplace, Mm -hmm we are not going to be capable of interacting with what they're doing. So imagine, Oh, um, interesting. Imagine an AI that runs on, uh, that takes care of the financial markets. Yeah. And it interacts with the stock market. It is going to be working so fast that no human can possibly keep up with the trades and other companies will write other AIs that will compete because wow. everybody's going to want to get an edge. So you're going to have billions of micro trades happening in you know, millions of a second. The only way we even know what happened during the day on the financial market will be at the end when we close it and we look back and wow. even then, probably so much will happen that we'll need AIs to interpret the wow, information wow. from the AIs. Because it's happening so fast. So much faster than us. Right, because um, we, we just don't, we don't do things that fast. We, we're we're just not, not capable, capable of that. That's why we build them. It's efficiency. Wow. But it will outpace us in everything. And I, I actually, in one speech, I asked uh, the, the audience, I said, give me an industry that won't be affected by AI in the next 20 years. And some guy thought he got me and he said, garbage men. And I said, that's a great point. It's already happening. And he said, what do you mean? And I said, there are already automated garbage trucks, self-driving, using Elon Musk technology, yep. that have are tied into a network of trash cans that have sensors in them and solar panels that when they get 80% full, they notify the garbage truck. It comes Amazing. out, it picks up the machine, it dumps it, it even goes to the dump on its own, no humans involved. Yeah. The AI is basically taking care of all of it. I said, yeah. so... No, give me another one. It's yeah, it, it's everywhere. It, it's everywhere. And it will affect yeah. every single industry. Yeah. Um, but will it make us, does that make us better then? You know, that's the thing. And I, the, the place that I think is, is the big bonus is in the medical field. Yes. I think that the fact that it takes how long it takes us to grow something in a Petri dish, try this thing, try that thing, try this thing, look at the reaction. Did it work? Did it not work? You know? Just imagine if we could speed that up. Like I think about cystic fibrosis just because I was very involved for many years. And when we first started in cystic fibrosis uh, study or, or doing that, that um, the gala, 
the average age of a, of a kid that had it or somebody had that was like 27 years old, 28 years old. By the time we stopped 19 years later doing that gala, the average age now for most of them is almost regular expectancy up to into the 70s. And here. that's because they found the gene and they found it faster than they thought they would. And then they found... Uh, they found uh, medicine that you could take to fight that 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 problem. Imagine if we had computers that could have done that faster than the five years. And they, how many lives would have been saved? Well, and, and yeah. healthcare is a great industry yeah. to look at that. Look at astronomy. Oh yeah, Imagine true. You've got an AI real time taking in every single piece of data from every single radio telescope, every single space telescope, right, every right, single listening right. station, and simultaneously processing all of that and remap and changing our models oh my god i mean it's it's it'll change overnight and we won't even understand why what terrifies me is the military yeah um because theoretically once ais are running everything because once you introduce ais in the military you're gonna have to have ais to combat ais you could have an entire war fought and we wouldn't even know why yeah um because it could be just shutting us down or, i mean the ais could be it might not even be any bullets or, or any bombs it could just be we just shut down your city or your country you have no electric now you have no gas grid you have nothing yeah you know that that's the part that could be it could be ugly because everything's run through computers and i think part of that and what we're not looking at this is the mm-hmm. real scary part is how we're treating ai you've got a million different people developing a million different ais there's no guardrails on this thing yeah and and the problem is they are like children the input we put into them absolutely dictates the output we get. And at no point are these developers like I work with it guys. I hire them. These are not guys that are worried about adding morals and ethics to their code. Yeah. Like, that's not their no, thing. They're exactly. worried about results. Yeah. It's what we put in there. They even said like uh, the guy that was listening to said, even when you look at like a Twitter feed or now it's called X, the Twitter feed, um, you see when, let's just use Donald Trump, when he would, he would put something up and then there would be all this hate stuff and then there would be stuff that was good and people really support him. And there was more hate stuff under that. He said, the guy that, that was on that podcast said that we are teaching the machines hate. Yes. And that, and we're teaching them that we don't get along as people yep. and that's not good. It's not good at all. And that's the part he said, we have to be careful what we put out there, what we put into these machines, because they're learning from us and they could either learn good or bad. Well, let me ask you this. Do you let your kids at the age of five just roam the internet freely without any guardrails? Absolutely not. Then why are we teaching our AAs that way? That's exactly right. I mean, we teach them in a small environment controlled yep. with the ethics and the values that we appreciate and we expand it as they get it. And Correct. that's really how you have to train AIs. And we won't take the time because yep. there's profit to be made. Exactly. And there's competitions between governments and all these things will come in the way. And I don't know where that lands. Yeah. Right? It was in the, the analogy I, I heard also was, you know, the Superman, obviously the, the comic book Superman, he comes down from, from his you know planet or whatever comes down on earth. He's a baby he open, and they, they find him in the barn. The, the Kent's Clark Kent's uh, parents are good people. They're farmers. They're, good earth, you know, good people. They, they have good morals. They have good ethics, all this stuff. If Superman would have landed in the wrong barn and they were evil people. I know some of those barns. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. <laughs> so do I, so do I. Um, I. Were you born in one of those? I'm just trying to just. I, no comment. <laughs> no comment. I, I did talk to your dad once. off the rails. <laughs> yeah. So no, so, but it's just interesting in that, that analogy was really good. Yes. The AI is Superman. Okay, the only reason he did good things is because he was raised by good people. We need to do the same for AI. Well, and we take our our ethics for granted a little bit, too, which I think we need to take a step back from. For example, I was trying to help my daughter understand why murder is bad. Yeah. And she's like, well, it just is. And I said, no, it's not. If you look, there's a ton of cultures in this world where it's okay to murder. Yeah. Like, depending on the situation and everything else, murder is fine. I said, we have dictated that murder is not, and you need to understand why mm-hmm. or else how will you ever understand your own moral code? Um, it's good stuff. And it's important. And it's important for this conversation. Yeah. Because we can, we've made some messed up AIs. Yeah. <laughs> that, well, that's the problem. And that's the thing. So they're only going to have the ethics and morals that of the people of, that are programming them. Or, or, or the doing. input that we... No, not the program. Not program. The, the input. Yes. It's, it's the input. The input right. that we put in. So if we set them loose on a Reddit... Um, a Reddit meme page, yeah, Boom. they're going to end up being some really messed up. Yeah. But if we, I don't know. I mean, I don't know where you, where, I don't know. That's the do problem. It. Think about it. where do we send them I to get know. good stuff? I don't know where I go to get good stuff. Like it's, <laughs> it's hard to find anymore. So it's amazing, right? I think we should just take them to the bar. <laughs> 
<laughs> Everybody's having a great time at the bar. AR, AI, AI bars. There you the go. AI bars, just for them. Bunch of alcoholic AIs. So before we end this up here, I mean, this is great topics, and we're going to keep it going a little bit longer than we normally do. But let's go. Let's go back into some of the questions that I had. Was can they can they replace humans? Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the convergence points that we're going to see, and they call it a confluence, um, and one of these points is going to be when AI is, one, able to Mm. self-code. Once it can write its own code, that's going to be a big moment. Two, when it can self-replicate. And three is when it control physical bodies. Yeah. Um, which we're already seeing, like that trash truck example, mm-hmm. it's not a humanoid body, no, but, but it's controlling trucks. It's controlling, yeah, it's, me- it's a mechanical thing. Uh, it, it there, And if you're looking at what Boston Dynamics and some of these other robotics companies are doing, is you are seeing the confluence happen in real time. You're seeing the robotics take leaps forward in the last 10 years, yeah. while we're simultaneously seeing machine learning take leaps forward. Mm-hmm. And they are going to smash together, I would guess, probably in the next 10 years, maybe even in the next five. Yeah, I'm seeing some of the robots with the facial, the the, the actual faces that they have on them. They look like human. I mean, it's it's not like it used to be. They look like human beings. The oh, yeah. faces move. They the eyebrows go and everything else. So you match that with the intelligence of of AI with the mechanical. It, that's going to be pretty interesting. And it will happen. Oh, it will happen. Oh, I agree. Yeah, and I think that'll be within my lifetime. I'll see that. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Don't say no. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like, nah, I'm, I'm not seeing that for you at all. Let's ask the eight ball. I mean, oh. Don't ask. <laughs> don't ask you the don't eight wanna, ball. Wanna, don't want to know. Don't, don't want to know. And then the other thing I was, um, the thing that I heard on the other podcast too, is that right now the guy had said that AI is at a, at a, basically the same IQ as uh, Einstein. Yeah. And they said it's multiplying like crazy. Well, so does it, is it going to, I mean, if, if they're already smarter than us No, I mean, that's, that's a flawed analogy. I mean, there's, there isn't really an IQ with AI. Okay. Um, again, back to its ability to compute comes down to how much power we give it. Gotcha. Um, it, it has access to all the knowledge of the world. No human has that. Yeah. So the, the comparison is, is not apt between any one human or even any one group of humans and AI because it has access to everything. You see that with chat GPT, yeah. go ask it questions. It can pull up stuff that you can't even imagine. Oh, it's Google. Cause it's, it's read the internet. Yeah. Um, what we're really looking at here is not so much an IQ test as much as an ability to perform human functions. Yeah. Um, which we are seeing. I mean, it was 10 years ago. I remember reading an article saying AIs will never be able to create art. They're wow. creating art right now. Oh, we actually have some of the most popular artists on the internet are AI artists. Amazing. Um, there are AIs that, uh, function exclusively on social media. Uh, in fact, Pepe, the frog is a complete AI account that interacts all over social media. Look him up on X or Twitter or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, Yeah. I follow Pepe. Um, he's a, he was a meme coin NFT that is now run by AI, completely independent. No humans interact with Pepe. Wow. No humans control Pepe. Pepe interacts with all the humans. Jeez. Um, so these things are real and they have already exceeded. Like I remember watching Star Trek and thinking Lieutenant Commander Data was the epitome of AI. It's already baloney because he yeah. never had emotion. They've already had emotional AIs. It's um, amazing. They've had funny AIs. They're That's not, crazy. They're not hysterical. I mean, right, right. Not Bill Burr funny, but they're pretty Not good. as funny as you. Not as funny. I mean, I'm great. You're you're pretty funny. I'm kind of the best. Yeah, you're one of the better. But like yeah. second behind me. Yeah, behind <laughs> you. Gotcha. Yeah. The AI, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> and then um, Sebastian Maniscalco is yes. after that, right? <laughs> it's those three in yeah, that order. Yeah, it's those three in that order. Craig, AI, Sebastian. Okay, got it. <laughs> Sounds right. Yeah, very good. So Amazing. It, yeah, so it's weird. It's, it is. There's a lot of weird stuff happening, and we don't. Well, what that shows is we don't know where it's going. Yeah, we really don't. We didn't know ten years ago. We didn't know thirty years ago. We don't really know. I see stuff from a year ago that's already been proven untrue. Amazing. So this is going to be, <laughs> this is going to be a learning experience, yeah. and it's going to be a real time learning experience. We're gonna. It's gonna yeah. be a school of hard knocks. It's it's amazing. Hugo, do you have anything? Any questions or anything? No, but I wonder. If Craig himself is an augmentation sitting right there across from you. So you're wondering if he's actually a robot. Is yeah. that what you're saying? Maybe the real Craig is sitting at home <laughs> drinking a beer. <laughs> As he would do. Right? He kind of did lead to that. <laughs> uh, maybe that's what's going on. I, I love how every time you talk about me, I'm drinking a beer. <laughs> In your mind, I have a major problem. <laughs> that's oh, pretty funny. There was something we never... Uh, if, do we have time? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. We never finished the, the thing with the school. Which yes, yes, yes. Very, yeah. That That is the, that is one of the ones education we definitely want to cover this so my thing with that is that high school person uh, high school student needs to write a term paper what's to stop them with putting in a couple things and it writes the whole damn don't paper. stop them encourage it why they're going to grow up in an ai world this generation is going to grow up with ai if you try to stop it you're trying to fight progress what you need to do is change your educational standards 
Uh, so it's no longer about writing term papers. Now mm. what it's about is present your term paper. Um, mm, got it. You can use AI to write it. I don't care. G- give us an example, Greg. What, what, what do you mean with that? Like percent? Okay. So, all right. Yeah. So for example, you, you want your students to write a term paper on a classical historical society and some kid right. picks Rome and says, I'll do it on Rome. Well, they can have AI write them a five page term paper Easily. on the history of Rome. And that's a piece of cake. It'll take them five seconds. But um, if they have to go stand in front of the class and do a presentation on what they've learned, that's different. Now that term paper that AI wrote for them is only a study guide. They have to understand the content and be able to uh, bring it and saying. be able to regurgitate it. I so I you're think saying. you're going to have, you're going to have to have a lot more involvement from the students. It can't be just that. You're not just handing in a paper you can't and the teacher it. reads it and goes, wow, this is amazing. Now what you, you're going to have access to information on a parallel level. So now br- you have to so step it up and understand it and you have to be able to feed it back in a method that's useful. to the I other like humans. that. I like that. So we need to shift our process on how we feed this information into our kids. We, Interesting. We can't hide from it. I'm glad you said that because you just put a whole new um, way of looking at that. Because at first I was like, yeah, how do you control this? Mm-hmm. How? I mean, you used to be able, you know, plagiarizing was a thing years ago, mm-hmm. you know, or not years ago, it always is. And, you know, that's what I thought of, but that's not plagiarizing. When you do the GPT, that's, it's that's original, it's content. original content. Yep. So uh, very interesting. I like the way that, that that went. So one other thing before we end up, I want to ask you is what do we do? As a, as a regular person, you know, we're not, we're not, we don't fight it. You can't fight this. It's happening. What, what do we do? We just sit back and watch it happen, I guess. Right. Well, I I think as with everything else in this world, if you're not directly involved, your responsibility is to understand. Gotcha. Uh, I mean, you can have a political, if if you have a political opinion and you don't understand what you're saying, you're part of the problem. And if you have an opinion on anything and you don't understand what you're saying, you're part of the problem. Yep. Do some research, understand what's happening around you. You know, at the end of the day, this thing is going to play out the way it's going to play out. Yep. Um, and I don't think fear is the right response. Ever. No, no, it never is. Because it, actually fear is not. It's the, the worst response. Exactly. It's educate yourself. And then you, then you can make a decision on whether you're supporting part of it or you are support, you're not supporting part of it or whatever. But either way, it's gonna, it, things are going to happen. Absolutely. You can't stop technology. But if you're aware of it, you know, there's a lot of opportunity here. I, I love the bio it wrote for me. I seriously do. I would hire me too in a second when I, I read I'm that. Done. I think so, I might be a CEO of IBM soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, just tell Chat GPT to add that to your bio. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that on there. Absolutely. Now you're the CEO of and IBM. There, and there you go. And now I am. Um, all you do is put it in, and it just it tells you that's what you are. I love it. That's this awesome. is great. All right, thanks for coming in, Craig. I appreciate it very much. Craig Stonehall from Laughing Rock Technologies. You do a great job every day. You help out our office here. We love that. And uh, thanks for giving us all this information about AI, man. I love it. Hey, thank you, Brad. It's always a pleasure. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. All right, there you have. It. We will see you next Thursday at 7 p.m. All right. Thank you so much. Are your kitchen and bathroom remodels a little overdue? Well, now's your chance to call First Response Contracting. John Sellers will take care of you. 484-256-7136. They do residential and commercial, and they're licensed and insured. Give them a call at 484-256-7136.